The science of classification, which is also called taxonomy. So why do we classify? Well, basically we classify so we can organize. And we need an organized system um, of biological classification to provide the names, orders of living things so that we can do this in a logical manner so that no matter who's speaking to each other, um, they can communicate and they are talking about the same things in the same way. So the naming system we use uh, it comes from a scientist, um, actually a Swedish botanist named Carolus Linnaeus and he developed this naming system to try to make it easier to communicate um, because let's say I'm in the United States and I'm talking about a tiger and I'm communicating with someone from Japan and they're talking about a tiger but they're using their own language that would be very confusing are we talking about the same thing so for biologists they are all going to use the same naming system so that each organism has a distinct way to be identified by all scientists who communicate. So we're going to break down language barriers by using Latin phraseology. We're going to use the worldwide names in Latin. So this system is a binomial nomenclature system where every organism will have a two-part name by the prefix for two, nomial two terms and nomenclature means name. So it's a two-part name and each organism will always be named by its genus and the genus term will always be capitalized and the second name or part of the name is the species and that will always be written in lower case. Now the binomial nomenclature term or name, the genus and species name, will always be italicized. However, if you aren't able to italicize, you would underline the genus and species. So let's look at some examples of how this would work. So if we were talking about a lion, so here we have a lion, and that lion is called Felis Leo, lion. But this cute little house cat here that is also a cat similar to a lion, but in this case it's Felis domesticus, so house cat. This tree right here is a red maple and this is referred to as Acer rubrum. And of course man, we call ourselves Homo sapien, wise man. Some of us are not so wise. So this classification system is called taxonomy and it gets its name taxonomy from the fact that the levels or divisions of organization are called taxons and basically we're going to group common organisms based on their characteristics. Certain things that they do, they have, their abilities that m make them similar and there are seven taxons in the taxonomic system we use. And those seven taxons are kingdom, which is the largest grouping. And then there's phylum. And under phylum, we have class. And the next order, a suborder, or subset is called order. Below that, we have the family. And then we have the genus. And then the species. So the species is the most identifiable, the most individual. So to remember this, we have a mnemonic, and this mnemonic device will help us, hopefully, to remember that order. And it's kings play chess on fine green squares. Kings, kingdom, play, P for phylum, chess, C for class, on for order, F for family, and G for genus, and S for for species. Kings play chess on fine green squares. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So if we look at, say, for instance, the California brown bear, we would be looking at kingdom. It's the kingdom Animalia. 
because it has a spinal cord or spinal central spinal area, it is called a cordata, that is its phylum. Because it has hair and it takes care of its young and females have mammary glands to nurse their young, they are mammals or mammalia, which is the class. They eat meat primarily, although bears are pretty much omnivores, being able to eat all things, and this would be order. It belongs to the family Ursidae, which is bear-like, and genus Ursus, and species Horriblis. So the horrible bear, Ursus Horriblis. Humans also, like the bear, are animals belonging to the kingdom Animalia. We too have a central column for us to be a chordata, a vertebrate. We are mammals having hair and having um, care for our young and mammary glands to produce milk for the young and so on. We also are primates, which put us in the same order as chimpanzees and orangutans. We belong to the family Hominidae and we belong to the famous uh, the genus Homo and species Sapien. So we are Homo sapiens, wise men. So let's talk about the kingdoms and there are six kingdoms. Now back when I was in high school we only basically studied three. We started to talk about four with the protists, um, but we pretty much had the protists, plants, and animals. Um, pretty soon the plant kingdom was divided into fungi uh, pretty much by the time I left college or before I got to the end of my four years in college. And then since then, because of technological developments, we have added the Kingdom Monera. And the Kingdom Monera has actually now been subdivided as the Super Kingdom Monera, and it actually has two sub-kingdoms under its title. So let's look at how this would break down. So in the Super Kingdom Monera, we have the Kingdom Archaebacteria, also known as Ancient Bacteria. And these would be unicellular organisms, single-celled organisms, prokaryotes, which means they do not have a membrane surrounding their genetic material. So no typically organized nucleus as you would with, um, with eukaryotes. And they have no cell walls, and they are based primarily on RNA, not DNA. Super Kingdom Monera Part 2, these is, this is the subkingdom eubacteria, and eubacteria primarily are the bacteria, the bacteria that we know of today. Uh, they are unicellular, also prokaryotic, meaning their DNA is not housed in a membrane. They do have cell walls, and they typically live in colonies, large groups, or are filamentous, which means they form long strands by connecting together. So this would be the kingdom Eubacteria. The kingdom Protista, which has actually been divided into three subgroups, there are the animal-like Protista, which are unicellular. They are eukaryotes, which means they have an organized nucleus, and this organized nucleus um, houses that genetic material. We have heterotrophic, which means they have to find their food. They have to get their food from an outside source and bring it into their bodies. And they are typically motile, meaning they have the ability to move. The plant-like protista are also unicellular. They are eukaryotic, having that organized nucleus. They are typically autotrophic, which means they can produce their own energy from a source. And there are two ways that this can be done. Photosynthetic autotrophs are those that take sunlight or UV light, ultraviolet light, and turn it into energy, as do plants. And then there are chemotrophic autotrophs, which take chemicals within their environment and use those chemicals to create energy. So autotrophic photosynthetic and autotrophic chemotrophic. 
Then we have the kingdom protista, which are these fungi-like protista, which it would include slime molds. They can be both uni or multicellular. Some of them are multinucleated, which means they are one cell with many nuclei. Um, they are eukaryotic, and they are typically decomposers, feeding on dead or dying, decaying matter. They are usually the detritus portion of the food chain. The kingdom fungi, which was originally part of the plant kingdom but has since been separated out. We are eukaryotic, uni and multicellular. They have cell walls similar to plants. They are typically autotrophic and they typically act as decomposers, breaking down dead matter. They are, they reproduce asexually, sexually, and by a process called alternation of generations. The plant kingdom, eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, they are photosynthetic depending on uh, pigments called chlorophylls to absorb sunlight, and they will have cell walls. And then the last kingdom, is the kingdom Animalia, eukaryotic, meaning they have an organized nucleus, multicellular, more than one cell to their makeup, heterotrophs, and as heterotrophs they can be herbivores, feeding on plant, carnivores, feeding on the tissue, muscle tissue of other organisms, or omnivores, meaning they can eat both plants and other animals, they have no cell walls, and they are the most complex and highly organized of the living organisms. So this is a basic explanation of our taxonomic system and the six major kingdoms in our classification system.